Did you know that you're technically part of a monastery as a single person in today's world? I didn't either. I didn't even know necessarily that you could be part of a monastery if you weren't a religious person. <laughs> Can you be part of a monastery as a lay person? I discovered actually quite recently that the answer is yes. Um, I came across a story and it was an article that I came across and later found out is a full-blown book written on this topic. Um, but the article that I came across was about a man who was a religious and he decided to be a hermit for a number of years. So completely on his own. And then after a number of years, he returned to his mom, which like, what, what a return, you know? Um, what a reunion. And he returned to his mom and he realized that his mom was a better monastic than he was. And it actually had nothing to do with his personal spiritual life. It wasn't that he was a bad monastic or either he was a bad hermit or a slacking religious person. It was because his mom was that good at being a monastic. And he goes on to, he just kind of pulls it out where my eyes were open that a monastery is not a place for religious people. It is simply a place set aside from the general hustle and bustle of the world. So mothers are part of a monastery in that we are in a place set aside in our particular stage of life that is not in alignment with the general hustle and bustle of the world. And to go even further, why I'm making this video for you today, if you're single, you are part of a place that is set aside. You are part of a monastery. If we're going to go by the definition that is the correct definition, um, you're part of a monastery in that you are single, in that you are not part of the general hustle and bustle of the world. You feel like you stand out. Your phase of life does not align with everyone else's. Um, and I think that that is something that's really important to acknowledge and really important to adapt into your own life. And I'm going to take it a step further. The definition goes, it is a place set apart from the general hustle and bustle of life so that we may learn that time is not our own, but it is God's. So a monastery is a place set aside from the general hustle and bustle of life so that we may learn that our time is not our own, but it is God's. And he goes on into his article to explain about how his mom, is, as a mother of many children, was frequently interrupted. Her schedule was not her own. Her sleep was not her own. Her personal space was not her own. Her food was not her own. Um, her body was not her own. It, uh, it's really beautiful, everything that he goes through, and he really highlights motherhood in a really beautiful way. But it got me thinking about, you know, it just does. It doesn't just apply to moms. Um, I think it applies to to people that are single as well, because you are set aside and you feel like you're set aside too. You feel isolated, like especially if you don't want to be in a place that's it's it, that's dating. Especially if you don't want to be single. You don't want to be where you are. You feel like you have been set aside. I want to offer this definition of a monastery as a way to kind of pull you back to the to the Lord and, and to his plan for you, that you are purposefully in a place right now that is set aside so that you may learn that time is not your own, but that it is God's. Because in a monastery, they have bells that ring off several times a day and even during the night. And they ring off and you are to drop whatever you are doing and go to pray. It doesn't matter if you're writing a letter to your mom and you've been hermit for six years, if that bell rings, you drop what you are doing and you go to pray. And he aligned it in motherhood with, you know, if your child is crying for you at 2 a.m., I'm sorry, you haven't slept in six months. Doesn't matter. The bell's ringing. Mom, you have to go answer it. You have to go tend to your child. And that happens all day, every day, right? With parents of, of hey, I just made all this food and I just got all the kids settled and uh, that bell's ringing. My name is being called. I have to answer. I drop what I do because it's part of where I am. And I think that there are bells for you as a single person. That Those bells maybe are calls to going on a date. Maybe they are your friend setting up and saying, hey, I have a, you know, a, a date for you tonight or I met someone that I think would be good for you. And, um, and there are bells for you to answer. So 
that you can kind of go along with God's plan more than with your own. And I also think that those bells look like rejection. I think those bells sometimes look like even being ghosted. Um, I think those bells can actually also be silent where you're in this period of singleness. You are in a stage of life that is set apart from the general hustle and bustle that you are learning that time is not your own, that it is God's. And that, yes, you don't want to be single right now. You are single. Yes, the mom does not want to be awake right now. She's awake. And you can't really control how long you're single. You can't really control how many bad dates you go on. Unfortunately, I wish we could cap it. Uh, you can't control how many times you're ghosted. Time is not your own. It is God's. And in light of that, it is up to us to decide how we're going to offer up our time back to him if it's his in the first place. How are we going to live answering the bells of our singlehood? That they call to you and they maybe, you know, take your attention or... Um, take your time in a way that you don't want it to, <laughs> how can you answer anyway? Because your time is not your own. And these bells are coming from the Lord. And they're coming from the Lord in a place that he has put you that is set aside so that you may learn to love him more and to offer up yourself more to him. And I think in that way, we become the person that we want to date, right? Like we become a person that we would want to be in a relationship with too. That we are proud of who we are, even if it's not perfect. That we have peace with who we are. Of like, I am not lost. I am not left in the wilderness. I have not been pushed out of the pasture. I am still very much known about and very much watched and listened to and loved. Uh, that these bells can be really hard and really difficult to answer. I don't want to answer them sometimes. But that I'm going to because they come from the Lord. And because I want to learn the lesson that he has placed in front of me. Uh, I realized that I never introduced myself. And then I said this whole video. So if you're new here, my name is Sarah. And it's so good to have you here. I make content for Catholic Match every month. And I'm over on their Instagram as well, at Catholic Match. We talk about all things dating relationships here. And we dive into a lot of different things. I just had some recent videos come out about theology of the body. And how it relates to you as a single person. I have a lot of other content out all of which I'm very proud of, and I hope that you have time to go on and check out. In the meantime, if you like this video, if it resonated with you in some way, would you give it a thumbs up? Uh, maybe comment how it resonated with you, what kind of bells you're answering right now in your life, how you're learning that our time is not our own, but it is God's, and how we can, therefore, in light of that, give our time back to him. And then if you wanna go ahead and share this with someone that maybe could use this message. I was shared this message initially, and so I'm just passing it along to you. I'll see you in the next video.